Good morning. Welcome to this Sunday morning service. Um, in this pandemic, I hope that you are keeping well. And for those who are affected by the pandemic, I pray that you have full recovery. Now, let us praise God by singing our first hymn, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Praise him with hallelujah, for Jesus is Lord. We come to our prayers, uh, our opening prayers. We always give thanks to God for who he is and because we love him. And then we always have uh, a time of confession, a time when we say to God that we're sorry for the things that we have got wrong. And so uh, let us pray. And as we do so, there is a response. When we say we worship you now, Please will you say, in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. So we say, we worship you now, in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray. Great and wonderful God, you deserve our heartfelt and constant praise. For you are all good, all loving. We worship you now, in, in your, your mercy. mercy Hear, Hear our, our prayers. prayers. Our lives should be filled with gladness, our hearts brimming over with adoration, our lips overflowing with thanksgiving. We worship you now. In your Lord, mercy, mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Forgive us that all too often we take your many gifts for granted, losing our sense of privilege and wonder at your awesome generosity. We worship you now. In, In your, your mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us for singing praises with our lips without meaning it in our hearts, for offering worship out of a sense of duty rather than privilege. We worship you now. In, In your, your mercy, mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Help us, Lord, 
rejoice in your love each moment, to bring our praise each day, and to offer our service always, faithful to you as you have been faithful to us. We worship you now. In, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer now and uh, Leo and I are going to sign it for you as we would do if if we were at the Deaf Church. So for people who cannot hear, they uh, rely on sign language and lip reading uh, in order to um, make their own communication. So we're going to sign the Lord's Prayer for you. Uh, you can join in if you wish or you may like to just say the Lord's Prayer as you know it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Here I've got an envelope. I'd like to show you here that is a banknote. This banknote is Jesus' banknote. Can you see that? It's Jesus' banknote. And at the back, it's like an American dollar. Okay? Now, I have this banknote, another banknote, cut into four pieces. Let me show you, cut into four pieces. You can see that. And normally I would ask a, a volunteer to come and piece it back together. So I'm going to try and piece it together for you. So if you see, I think it's slowly coming together. So you can see that uh, is the top bit. Great. So you can see that the band looks been pieced together. Now let's turn it into the other side and see whether we can do the same. Again, four pieces of band notes, and then we'll. together and see how it works. Hmm, I wonder what's going on here. Jesus is missing. Remember Jesus in the middle? It's missing. It should be look like this. So actually this demonstrates that many of our lives have got holes in them and because Jesus is missing in many of our lives and therefore our life is not complete so let's hope let, let's have a look at this envelope there's also another smaller envelope and in this envelope there's a little piece called peace and and jesus is the missing piece and therefore, with Jesus, we our life can be complete. And Jesus not only bring healing, bring all the goodies, but more importantly, he bring peace. A peace that only Jesus can bring. A peace that in Hebrew word means shalom. 
means right relationship with God, uh, restore the broken relationship between men and God is only Jesus can achieve this. And if you give your life to Christ, you will restore the relationship with God and you will truly experience peace or shalom. Thank you. The reading is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. Jesus heals many people. Jesus and his disciples, including James and John, left the synagogue and went straight to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever, and as soon as Jesus arrived, he was told about her. He went to her took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. After the sun had set and evening had come, people brought to Jesus all the sick and those who had demons. All the people of the town gathered in front of the house. Jesus healed many who were sick and with all kinds of diseases and drove out many demons. He would not let the demons say anything because they knew who he was. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of the town to a lonely place where he prayed. But Simon and his companions went out searching for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus answered, we must go on to the other villages round here. I have to preach in them also, because that is why I came. So he travelled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. Here ends the lesson. This morning's reading tells the story of Jesus healing Simon's mother-in-law and many sick people and driving out demons. Jesus was recharged by talking to God in his early morning prayers. And Jesus then went to nearby villages preaching the good news. His aim in healing the sick is not just restoring those six people's physical illness, but Jesus also restores their spiritual health. Because Jesus ultimate aim of exercising his divine healing is to bring shalom, a, he word, a Hebrew word meaning peace, wholeness and completeness at one with God. This morning's reading also encourages us to do the same by being the hands and feet of Jesus, bringing healing to others whether they are suffering from physical or spiritual illnesses. Let me use mercy ships as an example. As most of you know that I have been serving on board the mercy ships for nearly 20 years as a volunteer surgeon, removing horrendous and gigantic head and neck tumours and deformities. Our mission is to bring hope and healing to the forgotten poor by offering surgery and capacity building. Many of our patients are so demoralized because they have been ostracized by their own communities. Some patients told me that when they go out, people throw, throw stone at them. When they go to a library or go on the bus, people literally kick them out. When we first see the patients, we look behind this hideous tumour, but into the eyes of the real person trapped behind this tumour. This is because healing starts when these patients are greeted in screening or at our dockside clinics. For patients with these repulsive deformed facial tumours, someone comes up and shakes their hands, healing starts with that human contact and acceptance. There was a patient with an infected facial tumour called Quanum, 
who had walked miles and days to get to our assessment day, joining a queue of 7,000 people. As other prospective patients inched further and further away from her because of the smell and the disfigured face, she could not help but think, I must get away from here. I must, I will never get help. Look, look how people are avoiding me. Kwanam had just decided to slip quietly away, the shame too great to bear, when one of our crew members approached. And although this crew member's nose was sending a, a strong signal, move away, her belief in Kwanam's right to look human won the day and she moved in. And so she reached out and placed her hand on Kwanam's shoulder and said, don't worry, you will soon be seen. We will help. You are the reason we are here. It was that simple touch that changed everything for Kwanam. Up to that moment, she said, I had not been touched by another human being for 10 years. A smile, a touch that recognized her fellow humanity replaced Kwanam's fear with hope. All healing starts with acceptance. With this acceptance, patients who will never have believed it possible will start the journey of physical and spiritual recovery. As a lovely prophet said, he who has help has hope, and he who has hope has everything. To me, that is shalom, peace, with the right relationship with others, and with God, our Creator. We have pastors in the wards on the mercy ship helping the patient's spiritual healing. Hilary, my wife, your circuit minister, has served in this role as ward pastor in many occasions on board the, mercy, on board the African Mercy. She will pray with the patients, whether they are Christians, Muslims, or have no religious belief. Before our patients having their surgery, they will have a nurse's prayer in the ward, a porter's prayer on the arrival to the hospital, and an anesthetic prayer before going to sleep, and then a surgeon prayer before the scalpel touches the patient. So you can see we ask God to bring miraculous healing in every single stage of the patient's journey. In short, mercy ships not only offer surgery to correct patients' physical deformities, but also helped our patient to achieve shalom, peace in their spiritual healing. Although mercy should bring hopes and healing by changing the lives of our desperate patients, hope and healing also happens among volunteer crew members, including myself. This is because we are all broken and sinful people falling short of the kingdom of God and we are all in need of spiritual healing and the restoration of the right relationships with each other and with God our maker. Make us shalom, peace and wholeness. In recent Joe Biden's presidential inauguration, a young 22-year-old African Afro-Caribbean poet laureate Amanda Gorman gave a speech talking about his, her ambition and I quote, We, the successor of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised up by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And then Amanda told us about mercy and love. If we merge mercy and might, and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left. Amanda Gorman's uh, five minute poem encapsulated the true essence of freedom restoration of democracy and love, which are the key building blocks of shalom, 
piece. I call her poem again. To compose a country committed to all cultures, colours, characters and conditions of men. And so we lift our gaze not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony to all. These are all key elements of achieving shalom, peace, not only for countries like America, but also for all nations and all churches in the world. We have a God of love who suffered with us during this coronavirus pandemic. Although we might at times feel that God is far away and does not care during our repeated lockdowns, I'm reminded that although we are technically in lockdown in a physical sense, but there is no lockdown in sunrise, in fresh airs, in friendship, in family time, in creativity, in prayers, in hobbies, in hopes and dreams, in kindness, in learning, in conversation, in imagination, in sunset, and in hope. This is because God is with us in bad times as well as good times. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, Prince of Shalom, because Jesus came to offer his peace to us when he said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Through Jesus' birth, life, death and resurrection, Jesus restores wholeness from the broken relationships between human and God caused by sin. We have an amazing God of abundance who loves us so much that he sacrificed his only son Jesus for all our sins, past, present and future. Jesus gave us his life as a gift so that we, as his disciple, become people of peace because we participate in the life of Jesus who reconciled all things in heaven and earth, making shalom through the blood of his cross in Colossians chapter 1, 19 to 20. So ladies and gentlemen, let us play our part in bringing healing to each other, whether it is physical or spiritual, so that we can truly enjoy peace Shalom, only, only Jesus can bring, even during this pandemic and lockdown. Amen.
Whenever we have a, a worship service, we always pray for other people, um, sometimes in this country and sometimes around the world. And we also remember ourselves. And so we're going to do that now in our prayers for those who minister to others. Let us pray. God of love, we pray for all those in our society who minister to the needs of others. We think of those in our hospitals, the caring professions and the emergency services, doctors, surgeons, nurses and ancillary staff, paramedics, firemen, police, psychiatrists, therapists, counsellors, hospice, nursing home and special needs workers. These and so many others upon whose skill, compassion and dedication we depend in this time of needs. We think of caring organisations, those like Oxfam, Christian Aid and UNICEF who work overseas and for shelter, Bernardo's, Sue Ryder Homes and the many charities that work in our own country. A host of aid and relief agencies who bring hope to the poor, support to the sick and comfort to the dying, help to the homeless, working in different ways to support those facing times of crisis. We think of individual carers, those who offer their time and energy as volunteers, who look after elderly patients, disabled children, or terminally ill loved ones at home, who each day perform small but vital acts of kindness for friends and family, neighbour and stranger. These acts are noticed except by a few, yet so valuable to those they care for. We think finally of the family of the church, of those entrusted with full-time pastoral responsibility, of chaplains in hospitals and hospices, industry and commerce, prisons and the armed forces, sport and education, of missionaries, mission partners offering their skills abroad and of individual believers seeking to express their faith through caring words and deeds. We pray for those whom we know who are in hospital at this time and ask that your healing hands of mercy will stretch out to them and touch them and make them well. We pray for those who are bereaved, both those within our own churches and in the wider community. We ask that you will help us to do what we can to be of comfort to them. We think of ourselves and we pray that you will help us to be your hands and feet, Lord, and that where we can bring healing and love, that you will enable us to do so. Support all these people in their work, we pray, and show your love through their ministry. Oh God of love, we thank you for all who minister to the needs of others. Inspire us, Lord, through their example. Equip them in their continuing efforts and enrich the lives of many through the service they offer. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for your continued giving to the life of the church. Our churches do need uh, your financial gifts at this time because uh, there are still bills to be met and ongoing work in all our churches that needs to be paid for. So thank you whether you make your contribution through direct debit or uh, standing order or whether you uh, give your offertory to um, either myself or to the treasurer in your church. We are very grateful. And Leo is going to bless our offerings today. Lord of all, as we bring this offering to you, 
teach us also to offer ourselves to others, to recognize that wherever there is sorrow or suffering, hunger or hardship, you are there, sharing the pain and calling for our response. O oh Lord, teach us to offer what we can, where we can, when we can, conscious that whatever we do for anyone, we do it also for you. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to sing our final hymn now. So as we enter a new week, we're going to bless you as we part company. Whoever, Whoever you are, wherever, wherever you go, go whatever, whatever your strengths, whatever, whatever your weaknesses, weaknesses, God will be with you to hold, to heal, to guide and to bless. Go then in peace, assured of his love. Amen. Amen.